Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, degenerative disc diseases in the cervical spine are typically associated with myelopathy, especially in the elderly population. And there's always the question, should we do that from anterior? Should we do that from posterior? Should we do that combined? Should we use fusion techniques or maybe just do a decompression? And I would eludicate a little bit to that topic and discuss what options we have. First of all, if you look at anterior fusion techniques, we have certain implants and instruments available. We have, in fact, in the body spaces, it might be discectomy or corpectomy cages. We have different type of plates, semi-rigid or rigid plates, and certain combinations of these. If we use these anterior fusion techniques, there are some distinct pros and there are some distinct cons. The pros is, first of all, that's the golden standard technique. Each and everybody who does spine surgery is able to do that anterior approach and to do a decompression. It's a minimal soft tra trauma. You can achieve a very, very good decompression, especially if your myelopathy is associated also with a radiculopathy, because the radiculopathy typically develops from the unconvertible joints and you have to go more or less from the front to get a proper decompression. And you can, of course, correct kyphosis very nicely. The typical complications are the uh, complications which are associated with the anterior approach, for example, dysphagia or some organ lesions. We also have anterior non-fusion techniques, which are in fact not so very common with the myelopathy, but in fact there is generally an option to do an anterior foraminotomy only or anterior discectomy only, or for example even a total disc replacement. But these uh, non-fusion techniques also have some pros and some cons. The pros, once again, is the approach and the minimal soft tissue trauma. But of course, if you do a discectomy or just a foraminotomy, you only have a very limited compression, and you most likely will create uh, instability in these segments. Therefore, that's not really a good option. What about total disc replacement in these cases? It potentially preserves mobility, but it also might increase a little bit instability, and you all know that instability is a pathogenetic factor in myelopathy, and therefore this might be a problem. And discectomy alone, of course, creates kyphosis, and therefore it is complicated to use it. What are the alternatives? The alternatives are the posterior fusion techniques. And once again, we have the non-instrumented, or of course, we can use plates, we can use screw rod system with decompression to get our myelopathy decompressed. What are the pros? In fact, if you go from the back, you can get a very effective cord decompression. And once again, it's quite an easy, familiar approach. You all are able to do posterior toracal lumbar things, and so you are able to do cervical things as well. However, if you go from the back, you hardly cannot address an associated radiculopathy. It's very difficult to get the anterior decompression. Of course, you can do a foraminotomy from the back, but the anterior compression, which is typical for these type of radiculopathy, it cannot be addressed. It is very complicated to correct kyphosis, and another very complex issue or very complicated thing is the neck pain, the chronic neck pain after posterior approaches. The alternative, once again, the posterior non-fusion techniques are the foraminotomy or the laminectomy and laminoplasties, and once again, there are pros and cons. Effective decompression is one good thing. It's a very cheap surgery because you don't need any implants and it preserves mobility. But on the other side, once again, the problem is kyphosis correction. And if you just do a decompression in the back, you might get a swan neck deformity. So after having seen and said all that, the question now always arises, so which is better? Should we go from the front? Should we go from the back? And the answer to that question is very simple. There's no difference. Most of all the studies which are out there, especially the level one and level two evidence studies, do not show any significant difference between the anterior and the posterior approach, rather with regards to outcome, nor with regards to morbidity. There are some level three studies that might uh, eludicate that anterior might be better in some ways, but they are level three in comparison to the level one and two evidence.
So what is now your decision-making factor? How to decide if to go from anterior or to go for posterior? One important thing in our hand is the number of segments which you have to address and the location of the compression. If the compression is from the front, it's very logical to approach that from the front, and if it's from the back, you go from the back. If it's a non-contiguous uh, lesion, for example, it's always better to go from the front because you want to save the segment in between, and that's hardly not possible if you go from the back. You have to have a look at the sagittal profile. If you go archiphotic with your cervical spine, you have to go more or less from the front to get the proper reduction. And if you have a combined radiculomyopathy, once again, it's better to go from the front because the radiculopathy is much better to address from the front. And finally, if you have neck pain, you cannot preserve mobility in the neck. That's not really logical to do that. So how do we do that? And it looks a little bit complicated, but in fact, it's very, very easy. If you start in the right upper corner, you see with a one single level disease, we look at the uh, amount of compression and where the compression is located. If it's located anterior, then we go from interior. If we have a younger patient, we might think about a standalone case, but in the typical patient, in the myelopathy of the older patient, we go for a cage and plate fixation. And if we have a posterior compression, we think about going from posterior first. So very simple, straightforward. Let me elucidate that by one case, very simple case, single level myelopathy, radiculopathy associated due to the very significant disc herniation. And then if you go down that line of that scheme, you find a one level disease, you have an anterior compression, you do your anterior approach, the patient is above 60, then you use your cage and your plate, and then you end up with something like that. So it's a very, very simple, straightforward approach. How does it look like if you have a two level disease? Very similar. In fact, once again, we look for the amount of compression. Is it anterior or is it posterior? If you have a combined compression, we also start anterior. And if we have patients above or below 60, it doesn't really matter. In both situations, we use cages and plates. If the patient is not recovering completely, you can think about adding on a posterior decompression as well. And if you go from posterior directly, you might think about something like a laminoplasty in the younger patient, but in the typically older patient, you go for a screw rod system and a laminectomy. So how does that look like? A little bit more complex case. You see the patient had a previous fusion, C5 to C7, which is also approximately 20 years ago without any instrumentation. It was a pure bone graft fusion. You see quite nice alignment and good healing. And then you see two adjacent segment diseases with predominantly anterior compression with significant myelopathy. And that once again would be a case with anterior compression. You go from anterior and the patient is younger. And then you put in a cage and a plate. And that's how it looks like, once again, very simple, straightforward case. It becomes a little bit more complex if you have a more than two-level dis disease, and that is, in fact, the most common myelopathy which we typically see. And then another factor comes into place, and that's kyphosis, or the sagittal profile of the cervical spine. And that's the primary factor in our decision-making. So first of all, we look at kyphosis, and if we have a kyphotic segment, we typically start from anterior. If we have no kyphosis, we can also think about going from posterior. But typically, if, if it is a kyphosis, we go from anterior, we use cages and plates, and if it's not completely uh, satisfactory, decompressed, then we can add a posterior stabilization. And the posterior stabilization typically is a screw rod fixation the younger patient, it might be a laminoplasty. Let's have a look at some examples. A little bit more complex case. You see you have a four-level compression in this case with no radiculopathy and no kyphosis. And then you go down this line. You have no kyphosis. In fact, you might consider a posterior approach in more than two levels. And then you end up with a laminectomy and a screw rod fixation. And that's how it looks like postoperatively in the patient above 60, 
And if that patient would have been younger than 60, that's typically something which you can treat very nicely with laminoplasty and which allows you to preserve mobility. And finally, a little bit more complex case, younger patient, myelopathy, radiculopathy, and the significant kyphosis, as you can see here, even in the flexion extension for use, you do not really get a good correction of the kyphotic deformity. You see it's a multi-level disease. If you look at the CT scan, you might already see that in some level there is fusion in the front, and that's the reason why it's not correcting on the functional x-rays. So if you have a situation like that, and a multi-level, four-level myelopathy in these cases, then we typically go down that line. You see it's kyphotic. We see an anterior compression predominantly. We go for an anterior correction using cages and plates. And if we do not have a complete improvement of the neurological symptoms, we add an additional posterior stabilization with laminectomy and screw rod fixation. And that's how it looks like after treatment. You see, we did one corpectomy to get an optimal decompression of the spinal canal. We did two discectomy cages, and we added on a posterior stabilization. And that's the amount of decompression which you finally can get in these cases. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's summarize that. If you look at myelopathy in elderly patients due to degenerative diseases, anterior and posterior approaches are both valuable you get an optimal decompression. There's no real difference between the two approaches with regards to outcome on morbidity, so you're free to choose. The approach in our hand predominantly depends on the amount of levels which are involved, on the location of the compression, if it's anterior or posterior, and on the sagittal profile. If it is a kyphotic deformity, we predominantly go from the front. So thank you very much for your attention.